yet flying around in our own jetpacks. But inventors are still coming up with some pretty crazy ways to hit the skies. For instance, check out this Volocopter. It's from a company in Germany. It's essentially an environmentally friendly private helicopter. And then, and then there's this other company's take on the flying car. And <coughs> that's it in the middle. I drank some water in the commercial break, and it went down the wrong way, and I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come, overcome this. The Terrafugia Transition, that's that thing in the middle there, which is kind of, I don't know, look at it, it's, it, it's different. It, it made its public debut at an air show <coughs> in Wisconsin over the summer. It's a car that converts into an aircraft, obviously, complete with a set of folding wings. But the craziest one we've seen may have to be this thing here on the left. It's an aerobat. Sounds like something that would be here on our, on our news deck. It's a geobat, a two-person flying machine. The company behind it reports it'll take flight, actually will take flight, in 18 months. That company is Aerobat Aviation. The CEO says he's trying to raise a quarter million dollars to help fund the project. He's doing that on the Internet. And you can get it in a ride for yourself once it's finished. Jack Jones is the inventor of the geobat, and he is going to join us now if I can get him up here over on my own bat. Voila. How are you doing? <coughs> Hello, Shepard. Thanks T for having me on. Tell me about this product. I, I, I would want to go to space, so tell me about it. Well, what we have here, which appears to be the world's first viable saucer-shaped aircraft. Mm. And essentially what I've done is solve the center say, of gravity You should say problem. Earth's first, because we really don't know what's happening in the rest of the world. But I feel you. Go on. <laughs> but nonetheless, what you're seeing is a three-wing circular planform body. It's never been done before. History is littered with failed attempts of trying to get a perfectly circular aircraft to behave itself in the air. And it wasn't until the military visited me that I fully understood what was happening. The military visited? Tell me about that. At, well, <clears throat> the senior engineer Rick Foch, Naval Research Laboratory located in Washington, D.C., mm. visited my house for a short demonstration. Now, after just a few minutes of flight of two of my airplanes, he wanted to go talk to me. And I can honestly tell you that conversation lit me up like a Christmas tree. He confirmed what I'd only dared think about that I had solved the dilemma with regards to flying a circular ring. So you're going to put this thing up in the air in, in 18 months, and who can get up in the air in it, and how do they do that? Well, you can go to indiegogo.com. And if you'll just search for Geobat, you'll go right to it. There's different uh, venues for uh, donations. And if you want to ride in it, I believe you pay $1,000. And where can you go? Where do you go? What do you mean, where do you go? I don't know. I'd like to go to Vegas or maybe down to the Caribbean. Where, oh. Where? <laughs> well, once we get up and running, this thing has a massive fuel capacity. Uh-huh. And on top of that, you're going to be in one of the safest aircraft ever built because right. it's circular, it's totally connected. All right, I'm going to watch for you in 18 months. We're going to take a spin. Nice to meet you. We'll be right back.